what's up guys hope everybody's doing well and having a great day in this video and I'm gonna start doing this in some of the videos moving forward out of Australia Queensland's X-Files this was shared with me by Tala Wood and it is a plethora of sightings of unusual objects in the nighttime skies and sometimes in the daytime skies out of Australia. I'm going to take you guys down to the location of one of the many, many reports that have been filed over the decades out of Queensland, Australia. They're calling it their version of the x file stuff that's being released to the public. What I've done is read through and found some pretty good ones and I'm going to share those with you guys here at the end of the video. Some of them are pretty vague and some of them are really really good and what I'm gonna do is share some of the really good ones with you guys in upcoming videos pretty cool this stuff kind of aligns with some of the things that we're seeing still to this day in some cases over 50 and 60 years ago the one I'm gonna share with you today is from 1978 really interesting sighting but first here at the website checking out the Schumann resonance seeing a little bit of activity from that coronal hole the high-speed solar wind is interacting with earth shields coincidentally there is a power outage it has nothing to do with the the solar wind stream but there's over 90,000 customers right now as I do this video in California without electricity and I think that's from the Santa Ana winds hopping over to the Yellowstone super volcano caldera see a little bit of activity on some but not all of the seismos the red earthquake signature or at least one of them the larger one is from the 6.6 .6 magnitude earthquake that I think was downgraded to a 6.4 way down in Argentina but it was detected on a lot of the seismographs in fact most of the seismographs at the Yellowstone supervolcano northeast quadrant still kind of busy not as busy as the northwest used to be you can see that energy is transferred from the northwest to the northeast side for whatever reasons. Speaking of earthquake activity, we've been watching very closely Mount Hood up in Oregon. Mount Hood sits 50 miles east of Portland, approximately 50 miles as the crow flies. You can see there's been a swarm of earthquake activity on the southern flank of the 11,000 foot stratovolcano. Mount Hood is just over 11,000 feet and it is, according to Wikipedia, a potentially active stratovolcano in the Cascade Volcanic Arc in northeastern Oregon. We're keeping a very close eye on the earthquake activity there at Mount Hood. So far, it's been relatively small with regard to the size of the earthquake. It's the volume. There's just a lot of them showing up. 1.1, 2.1, 1.7, 1.3, 1 and the list goes on and on. And you can see this has been going on for quite some time. Earthquake activity at the base of Mount Hood in Oregon. Hopping over to spaceweather.com. Comets dive the sun. I noticed this a couple of days ago myself. This goes back to January 17th when I noticed noticed dual comets diving the sun so I put together this little video slideshow of the two comets the one over here on the left is actually pretty good size unbelievable then there was one over here on the right it's not uncommon at all to see a comet from the Cruitt's comet family let me pause it real quick look at the size of that thing what they talk about here at spaceweather.com the one you see over here on the left is a member of the Kreutz family a swarm of fragments from a giant comet that broke apart many centuries ago more than 85 percent of the Soho comets belong to this group and we do see them from time to time but this one over here on the right which you're going to see in the video slideshow I made is of unknown origins it's a sporadic comet Here's the Kreutz Comet, and it's pretty good size. I've seen several on the Soho instruments over the years, and that one there is actually pretty good size. You can see it over here again, closer range at the Soho Lasco C2. The first one was Lasco C3. Watch it stretch, go right there. See it stretch out and go right into the sun. Here it is over at the Cactus, kind of a black and white version. There's a the larger one there. And they say that's around 50 meters. That's approximately 140, maybe 150 feet in diameter. Pretty good size comet. 
One over here on the right is much smaller. There they both are at the same time. That is very rare. You don't see that very often. And a lot of times they'll be about this size over here. They'll dive in and disappear. This one here made a dramatic, very bright appearance in the Soho Lasco C3 spacecraft. Now I want to take you guys down to Burktown, Queensland which is in northern Australia. The one we're going to look at today is out of Burktown, Queensland. goes back to 1977. Mount Issa District, Burktown Police Station, January 2nd, 1977. goes on to say, relative to sightings by persons within the Burktown Police Division of Unidentified Flying Objects, Sir, I have to report with reference to the above that on December 25th, 1977, a fisherman by the name of Rudolf Beer came into the Burktown Police Station and reported to me that while on a fishing expedition in the company of another fisherman, Barry Taylor, he saw an unidentified flying object. This is one of the better ones that I've read so far, and I have not read all of them by any means. There's a lot to read, but I'm going to share some of the better ones because they relate to some of the things that you guys are seeing today. Um, we see these things are different sightings all over the world now, especially with the conception of the smartphone. Some of these are similar to what we see today. That's all I'm saying. goes on to say, he stated to me that on 12 at about 9.40 p.m., he was coming down the Albert River, and that would be this river right here. There's the Albert River, okay? And he's coming down the river, headed back to town. And this is where this incident that I'm talking about occurred. He was coming down the Albert River just near the Landsborough Channel when he saw a bright light coming from the east. As the light drew closer, it became clearer. He stated that it was probably the size of a house. It was a white color, completely round, with mist coming from the underside of the object. In the mist, he could see a powerful bright light. The object came in their direction and when it was about two miles away it appeared as if it was going to land. Then it suddenly took off up into the sky at a tremendous speed to a height where it could only be seen as a cloud in the night sky. The bright light could still be seen in the cloud. The object then disappeared into the western sky. Beer stated that he saw the object for at least a half an hour and at one stage was only approximately 20,000 meters away. He stated that at no time did the object make any noise. Barry Taylor, who accompanied Beer on the fishing trip, was interviewed but stated that he was inside the wheelhouse for most of the sighting and only came out when his partner called out to him. He stated that when he came out of the wheelhouse, the light was just going up into the air. He stated that it did appear to be a bright light with a haze around it. When he saw it, it was a long way up into the air. It went into the air and just faded out. He said it didn't look like a plane or any natural phenomenon that he knew of. He said it appeared to be one light inside another. It made no sound that he could hear. Both fishermen were sober at the time and stated that they had no alcohol to drink in the preceding 24 hours to the sighting of the object. Goes on to say on 1230-77, I was contacted by Dumaji Mission on frequency 5110 of the Royal Flying Doctor Radio. The Aboriginal Police Sergeant stated to me that at about 9.30 on 12.23.77, himself and most of the Aboriginal community at the Dumaji Mission saw an object which he described as a fire cloud in the sky shaped like a football. Inspector Police, Mount Issa District. And those are out of the Queensland X-Files, and we're going to read some of those from time to time. There's a lot to go through that was shared with me by Tallow out of Queensland. And like I said, every once in a while I'll share a, a really good one that's interesting, loaded with lots of detail and stuff like that. And that's one of the few I've found. So we'll read more of those in the, in the coming days. Coming up in my next video, this was noticed by Mary Hall, high above Earth, looking down at the Earth from the International Space Station. She captured a small video of a very unique object in the sky 
high above planet Earth. And here's a still image from the video we're going to take a look at here in the next video. Mary Hall, you can find her YouTube channel, link below in the description box. Mary does not miss a trick. If you guys have any photos you'd like to share, you can send those to reports at MrMBB333.com. All of the photos end up here at the website at the Sky Phenomena Photo Gallery, and sometimes I'll use them in a video just like you saw right here. Thanks for watching. Have a super day, and be safe out there.